Hi, it's Mark from Apprentice One to One and Power Sonic. Welcome back to the latest video over on my YouTube channel. Thank you to everyone who's been subscribing and watching. It means a lot. And if you are watching now as someone who isn't subscribed, please click that button. Um, you know, it makes a massive difference to building up the channel and helping more people find it, hopefully. Uh, just a reference on to what the channel is all about, because I realise a lot of you are new subscribers and might not be aware. Um, but I started a community called Apprentice One to One back at the start of lockdown last year. And the idea was to help apprentices who'd lost their jobs because of redundancy through coronavirus find work and um, you know get back out on the tools, out back into college, not lose their college places. Uh, and off the back of that, it's kind of grown and developed and now we're helping with, with training and helping employers with access to grants and information about the apply to them and, and just providing some guidance and support where people ask for it really. So we've got the community over on Instagram, um, we've got the community on a Discord server as well now, which I've spoken about before. So it's a little chat forum that's building up a few people in there who just, you know, Chewing the fat and helping each other, um, you know, it's really quite nice to see actually that that, that spirit's there amongst apprentices and other people. And uh, yeah, the Discord thing was to really kind of show what goes on over on Instagram, but in a, in a public place so other people can join in and, and become involved as well. And uh, yeah, that, a lot of these videos are aimed at apprentices, so keep that in mind. I'm not trying to build a channel up based on, on views and... Um, subscribers as such i'm not looking to become some next youtube famous influencer there's loads of people out there absolutely smashing that now and i love watching their content and getting involved in their their videos in the comments so i'm not looking to be like that but it is uh, a place i'm trying to share my knowledge my experience day-to-day -day activities just to help apprentices really if anyone else takes any value from that as electricians all the better i think some of the site work we show is also you know just a demonstration that I am actually out there doing the work on a day-to-day -day basis and what it looks like in electrical contractors business um, for both employers and apprentices so that's kind of the ethos of the channel um, just just brought back to the new subscribers if anybody is uh, dropped in and not aware of what's gone on prior speaking about that we've got some building with the IET where we can be um, an enterprise partner or whatever whatever the term is and that's to help apprentices register as members of the IET through Apprentice One to One. It costs £20 and um, you get all of the benefits of being an IET member at apprentice level. And it's a really good place to start your career progression and recording all of your learning and knowledge. And there's loads of resources within the IET's um, community that go far beyond anything else that there is out there, I would, I would suggest. So it's well worth looking into and um, yeah, I'll pop some links to that in the description of this video and there'll also be some other stuff coming out on Instagram and other social media platforms to explain how you can become involved if you want to seek membership of the IET and help develop your learning and knowledge and build a career for the future um, amongst other industry professionals. Other than that, we're going to cut straight to this video now where I'm just going to run through some hand tools and um, some power tools as well. And then we'll have a little look at my test board because I've made some improvements to it. See what you think. This is just a little sneak peek. There's other videos coming on that that I'm in the process of recording now. Otherwise, I'll stop waffling. We'll get on with it. Um, join in in the comments as always. Please like and subscribe to the channel and I will catch you all later. So looking straight on with the tools, there's this uh, from Weir and I've got this specifically because... Will from over on Instagram, Will's Electrical, um, said about these on a post I'd made, what they were and what they did. Uh, primarily, I use them for stripping flex. So if you've got a load of click connectors, for example, or an outside light and you're at the top of the steps and you don't want to take a load of gear with you, these are great. You see in there, there's also the 2.5 and 1.5 mil stripping holes for your inner insulation, cutting blade as well. Um, they don't get used every day, far from it, but they come in handy. And one of the little side uses for them I found is taking the outer insulation off on um, your tails. So this is the 25 mil tail. See there, it takes it off nice and easy. It will do the inner insulation as well. It's not quite deep enough, so it's a, it's a bit more hassle than just using your croppers or uh, the Nipex dismantling tool, but you'll see there, it's taking it off. And uh, yeah, it's a nice clean cut, doesn't leave any marks or anything. So yeah, there's those. And um, I've had them quite a while. And to be honest, they maybe get used once a week, something like that. Like I say, if you're up in a scissor basket or on top of your steps and you don't want to be carting a load of gear up around with you, you know, these are great to just chuck in your pocket if you've got a bit of flex to strip. Or you're at a consumer unit change and you know, you're flying through your twin and airs and you need to strip the tails as well. They uh, have a side hustle for that, which is, um, as Will would say, quite spice boy -y. so yeah there's those so one of the other tools you'll have seen me using over on instagram if you follow me there is these klein croppers so the 6213s 
and these are brilliant for stripping most things to be honest and cutting quite a lot of stuff but you can use them on your twin and earth so taking your outer insulation off again with this you've got to be careful there's a knack to it and uh, yeah nice clean stripping cut you can see that on camera and then equally you can um, strip the inner cars as well so really really clean cutting cropping and this is just 1.5 mil cable but yeah you get the idea proper nice tool to use really comfortable in the hand and uh, they've stayed sharp for quite a bit of time now again you've got to be careful with all your croppers to make sure you're not cutting inappropriate material any of them will blunt real quick if you do start starting to mess about cut stuff they're not designed for but yeah these highly recommend them and i'm going through a load of croppers at the minute as you all know Right, so this is another one from Milwaukee, it's the Shockwave Impact Driver Set. Anyone who's had these little red boxes before will know the standard for them and how they all get presented in this little case. But we've got a little pack of bits in here, so you can see all the little um, end bits you'd put in your impact drivers and drill drivers. Um, we've got a little 10 and 8 mil socket driver up there, the longer Shockwave bits, a bit holder, and then over on this side varying um, different sizes of um, Posi and Phillips heads got some torque heads uh, they got to all the decent size actually that's one of the bigger torque drivers I've seen in these kits actually in the end there uh, so that's pretty cool and then again some more of these at the end and with the shockwave ones they're supposed to be more resistant to snapping um, you know there's varied reviews on these actually online so I'm looking forward to having a go with them and seeing what happens uh, it's on offer with CEF recently so I thought I'd uh, treat myself to a new set of bits you can never have too many um, they always come in don't they especially with so many different ends on this little selection here so i thought they'd throw that in the video as uh, another little package of bits and accessories for impact drivers and drill drivers ones as well and these are from klein a um, bit bigger than the other ones use these for taking um taking some bigger conductors down and uh, yeah very very solid bit of kit them um, used them quite a lot i've had them probably now coming up 18 months a couple of years uh faring pretty well still nice and sharp so there's those ones um oh yeah one of the other recent purchases from klein that someone had asked about on one of the other videos is these so these are the screwdrivers and the thing i pointed out about them is if i show the slot apparently i didn't show it well enough on the last video you can insert a, a screw into there and it will hold onto it itself i'm trying to get it to focus see there pop the screw in and it holds onto it they've got a cross head and the the flat head for those and as usual with the klein handles really comfortable really easy to use and um yeah they'll come in handy for containment work and uh, yeah while we're on with klein the uh, jab saw as well actually because i've got that just here so as the foldable jab jab saw it sets at that position and it will also rotate around to lock out straight and then obviously it folds right away so it's nice and safe that's another one uh, and the other question i had on one of my other videos was this to do with the Procore batteries from bosch i think someone had spied it on top of a consumer unit you can see how thin they are so bosch have really come a long way with the battery tech and that for, for weight to size because that's key for me when you're working up on steps and stuff having a lightweight tool as well, these 4 amp hour battery packs a punch. We've got the 8 and 12 amp hour ones as well, but it's the, the weight and bulk of them. Um, they still seem to be smaller than the Milwaukee ones, which is a, a strength of the Bosch. But yeah, I just thought I'd show that so you can get an idea for the size. Put the croppers on top of them, so they're the 160 mil croppers. You can see it's not, not that thick. So a nice uh, Procore tool. And another thing actually as well while we're on it, these. So these are your extendable probes. So uh, if I pull these out, I've had these for a bit of time. They were sent in by Dan from Tools Down to pass on to an apprentice. And we will be doing that in one of the giveaways soon. Um, but yeah, extendable probes. So we've got a... I have a set of these in my kit anyway. Um, but they, they're always a nice feature to give yourself a bit of distance between you and the bitey stuff. So if you're doing your testing, um, you can keep a good space away. I mean, the trade-off with that is making sure you can still see what you're doing and um, being safe keeping control of the tool as well because they're a bit more unwieldy um, at times some people don't like to to use the extendable probes for that reason um, i don't really mind i'm quite comfortable using the probes as they come anyway as long as you've got the appropriate P ppe and your gs38 probes on the end and you're taking care when you're working live 
but it doesn't hurt if you want to put a bit of extra distance between yourself and the bitey stuff so they're uh, another interesting one and uh, yeah just while we're on the video looking at stuff i have made an upgrade to the test board i'll show you it now see if i can uh, flick you around uh this way so over at the consumer unit you can see there we've now got you can see that a d40 and we've been able to do that because as we know to my unit there is oh i spun right around there what's going on so in my unit there is um a very very low value of ze coming into it so even over at this point so now we're we're going in from that d40 comes over in 10 mil and uh, we terminate into this consumer unit up here you'll see now there's a c32 in that board and that then loops down into this board if you've watched my other videos you'll have seen me messing about with this already but into the b16 and it was just to try and illustrate how selectivity of mcbs is really difficult because somebody said you know made the suggestion why don't you try some different types and i i think i'd already alluded to the fact i was going to be doing that anyway so we're not connected in with a plug top now we're not messing about with the rcd at the the main three phase board over the other side of the room um, but we do still have these rcds in circuit up here obviously on this board no rcds but if i turn the the power on you'll see i've got a a, a cable plugged in there which is shorted out already so i've now got the b16 ready to go is all i need to do is flip the main switch up on this and we should see if i can span out see what would happen under fault conditions uh, where's the zoom button why is it not zooming there so we're zoomed out now and we can have a little look so in here got the dead shot in the circuit all of that's ready to rock and roll powers on you'll see up there the emergency lights receiving charge and if i flip this main switch up you should see there we've had an operation of the b16 we've also had an operation of the c32 and if you spy out the corner of your eye here the emergency lights decided to turn on which should tell you as we span over here that the d40 has also operated it's interesting isn't it it's that whole selectivity thing again when you're using mcbs even if you're adjusting the values changing types if you've got that instantaneous high current fault as we saw with the time curve graphs on the last video achieving selectivity is pretty tough so there we are i've had a quick look through those tools and also fired up the the test board just to show you the new setup i'm putting in place just to explain that a little bit better while i can uh, look at you we've got the D40 over in the, the TPN board now. We've got a 10 mil steel wire armor cable over to this board out the other side of the room. And we've dropped down through some C32s, B16s, put a dead short on to see if we could get any selectivity under short circuit conditions. And I've got a video coming in full that looks at all this. This is just kind of a sneak peek. But you saw right there, they all just went together just the same. So it's another demonstration of when you put an instantaneous high, high current fault onto a system. It's really quite difficult to get selectivity and that's why you're kind of relying on the impedance of your final circuits to help you out a little bit but we'll talk about that on other videos um, i hope you've enjoyed watching this one it is a really short one it's just to have a little look at some of the gear i've um, been asked questions on in other videos as well and uh, yeah thanks for watching i'll catch you on the next one